What's up, everybody? I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. There is a lot that needs to be talked about, so let's go. First thing I want to talk to you guys about is sports. I love watching sports. Basketball, football, soccer, you name it. I love watching it. I grew up watching sports and everything else, and I truly love it. And after watching the France versus Croatia uh, World Cup final, oh my God. Just, oh my God. It was just, just like that. Just watching how awesome it is and everything along the way. And kudos to France on, on winning the finals. And you guys, y'all toughed it out. Y'all were out there. Croatia, you guys were good as well. All the other teams are out there were good. U.S., next time, next World Cup. Y'all need to bring it. Y'all need to come in there. Don't don't trust it. Oh, yeah, we tried. No, we're going to win the next World Cup, okay? We got to be in the World Cup for, for the next one. 2022, we're going to be in there, all right? But the final, Croatia versus France, oh, my God, it was so amazing. And, like, just watching it, it was, like, going crazy and everything. I know my friends who watched the World Cup. I know y'all the same way. Some of y'all root for Germany, some for Mexico, some for Japan, that kind of thing. And, yeah, it, it was just unbearable, you know, for them to win four to two. Oh, my God. I, I lost it. I know the president of France lost it. He was just like, oh, my God, we won. I know the team lost it. But, yes, that kudos to you guys. And congratulations on you guys on winning the World Cup. And let's see what happens in the next World Cup, you know. The second thing I want to talk to you guys about is about Trump and Putin. You know, for as long as history remembers Donald Trump, it will be a day that will live in infamy. And Trump, uh, he had a summit with uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin in Helsinki on Monday. And basically, it's already one of the most uh, notorious moments in the tortured related uh, relations between Washington and Moscow. Now, first, there were these visuals. Putin seemed totally in control, whereas Trump would lack focus and authority, dodging questions and praising Putin where he should be, in, for it should have been basically condemning him for Russian Russia's most uh egregious uh actions you know the annexation of crimea 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 i hope i say it correctly in 2014 and meddling in the last u.s presidential election second uh rather than confronting putin about his uh election interface as trump vowed you know vowed twice to do most recently in london uh trump basically backed up the the Russian leader, point after point, especially on the uh, meddling allegations. Now, when asked, you know, he his beliefs about this, uh, you know, whether Putin was denial about this whole thing on the, you know, any election, despite the U.S. intelligence community unanimous uh, assessment to the contrary, Trump, you know, he referenced to the defeat of Hillary Clinton and questioned why the FBI still has not, you know, Talk to her about her server. And even so, so what was most stunning was Trump, uh, you know, a session, you know, uh, he basically, that he did not see any reason why Putin would interfere with America's election, basically for him to, you know, siding with Russia's leader over U.S. intelligence analysis. And, you know, a lot of people went batshit crazy about this and everything. They were like, "What? What? He just basically is like just being scared, and he is basically." And you know, he Trump tried to clean up the mess basically while he was tweeting across uh, the Atlantic. He was like, "As I said many, as I said today and many times before, I have great confidence in my intelligence people. Your intelligence is like a rock, basically." And continue on, he added, however, I also recognize that in order to build a brighter future, uh, we cannot exclusively focus on the past. As the world's two largest nuclear weapons, we must get going. Hold on. Oh, so, what about North Korea? You know, I'm just trying to, I know it's, no, I'm, I'm trying to figure stuff out. Because, again, he has the mind stone of a rock. And he basically, this he's basically like the puppet master. He's like, he's a puppet. And Putin is the puppet master. You know? It's just like that. And then you got 
photos of him. Well, certain photos about like Trump, Putin, and it's just y'all people. People realize I'm like, why y'all? Y'all ask me like, Brian, why do you talk about him? Because he doesn't do anything for this country, y'all. He really does. He he brings up like the whole racism and like prejudice and all that other kind of things, and people are like, no, nah, no, nah, he don't do that. Again. Open your eyes and you can see what is going on in a nation and you can see how horrible it is getting right now. Lastly, I want to talk about an uh, actual great president and that president is former President Barack Obama. And he is making his highest profile speech since leaving office, urging people around the world to respect human rights and other values under the threat of address marking the 100th anniversary of uh, for, uh, leader Nelson Mandela's birth. Now, while I'm not talking about Trump or anything along the way, Obama's speech in South Africa is expected to counter many of Trump's policies, rallying people to keep alive the ideas that uh, Nelson Mandela worked for, including democracy, diversity, and good education to everybody. And an established, an established, you know, estimated 14,000 people gathered at a cricket stadium in Johannesburg for the speech, which was also streamed online. So more and more people saw that, and I saw a glimpse of it, which was really good. And I just, you know, I always applaud him because he's he's done a lot for for our nation. And someone, uh, John uh, Streamlo, uh, professor of international relations at uh, this is gonna be a weird university to say, with Walter Stern. I don't know how to say it correctly. University in Johannesburg. He said just by standing on the stage honoring Nelson Mandela, Obama is delivering an eloquent rebuke to Trump. Uh, and basically, you know, he he also uh, added to that, you know, when Putin and Trump were standing together, you know, that was just like eh. now we see the opposing team, Obama and Mandela. Now, y'all, this was Obama's first visit to Africa after leaving office in early 2017 you know he stopped earlier this week in uh, kenya where he visited the rural birthplace of his late father now obama's speech you know it it expected to highlight how the nobel peace prize winner uh who was in prison for 27 years y'all 27 years kept his campaign against what appeared to be and you know unbelievable odds to end uh Apparat, uh, you know, just in all this kind of stuff with South Korea's, I mean, it's not South Korea, sorry, South Africa's harsh system of white majority rule. And Mandela, who was released in prison uh, in 1990, the year I was born, y'all, 1990, uh, and became South Africa's first black president four years later. But he passed away in 2013, uh, leaving a powerful legacy on. Uh, reconciliation and diversity along with a resistance to inequality economic and otherwise and so much more now Obama has like I said he has you know shied away from public comments on Trump whose administration has reversed and attacked notable achievements that he has done in every own way the US has under under Trump has withdrawn from like the 2015 Paris climate agreement the Iran nuclear deal while dealing with like the Affordable Care or Obamacare and so much more. And, you know, instead of like commenting on politics, Obama, he his speech was drawing a border, like a, a broader theme on his administration for Mandela, who's who actually who, who basically was, you know, who we saw as a mentor for him. And it, because of that, he became the first African-American president. And I love him. And, you know, when, you know, when basically going up to talk about this, when, you know, Obama was a U.S. senator, he had his picture taken with Mandela, uh, you know, Obama kept that in his office. If you have, if you see it, he, he kept it in his office no matter what he said. That was like, it was, it was basically like encouragement to him and everything else on the way. And Mandela, he, he really was a great guy to, you know, hear about, to see videos about him and everything else on the way. And Trump, you know, it's just, ugh, you know, I, I, I bet he doesn't even know that, you know, it's the 100th anniversary of Nelson Mandela. You know, it's just, it shows how much we have going on in our nation, you know. 
people think racism is done. No, I mean, if you look at what's been happening since April until now, it's July. April, May, June, July. Four months. And still, we still get there with racism. All these things going on, it's just, it's just upsetting. But with that being said, I, I want your guys' opinions about everything, about the World Cup, about the whole Trump-Putin thing, about Obama and Mandela. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Let the people know I am out there for you guys because I'm actually always out there getting a the good word. Make sure you guys get the good word and everything else along the way. I hope you guys are having a wonderful summer. I am having a hot summer because here in Texas it is like 104 degrees. So, whoo, Jesus. But I hope you guys are having a good summer. And with that being said, I love you guys. Peace out.